Welcome to our channel, World Inheritance. Today we will talk about an Arab country, one of the most ancient and ancient civilizations in the world, which is Egypt. Egypt is not just a country ancient with its civilization and history, but rather a natural artistic painting drawn by the hand of power, and a paradise on earth full of enchanting beauty. Its beaches, golden touched by the waves of the Mediterranean and the Red Sea, its mountains, towering and hugging the sky, and its desert, vast and telling stories of the past. Its people, kind and generous, known for their hospitality, chivalry, and constant smile that gives the place a special warmth. Egypt embodies the spirit of coexistence and tolerance between different religions and cultures. Egypt, an ideal tourist destination for lovers of history and beauty, a journey through time that takes you through an ancient civilization and delights your eyes with breathtaking beauty. Let us learn about the most important tourist attractions in Egypt, which are filled with tourists and the story of each shrine. Khan al-Khalili is one of the neighborhoods of Old Cairo, and it enjoys a great tourist attraction for visitors to Cairo and Egypt in general. It is characterized by the presence of bazaars, shops, and popular restaurants. It is also characterized by the large number of tourists and the habituation of its residents to them. The ancient neighborhood of Khan al-Khalili is 600 years old. It is considered one of the oldest markets in Egypt and the Middle East, and it still maintains its ancient architecture from the Mamluk era. Khan al-Khalili was not affected by the factors of time and remained an inspiration for writers and artists. The Khan is a large square-shaped building, surrounding a courtyard resembling an agency, while the middle layer contains shops, while the upper levels contain stores and residences. Its name goes back to Prince Jaharaki's Al-Khalili, who ordered its construction in the year 784 AH, i.e. 1382 AD. He was a Mamluk prince from Hebron, Palestine, and historical stories tell that after the killing of Al-Khalili in Damascus, the Mamluk Sultan Kansa al-Ghuri removed the Khan, and established in its place agencies and shops for merchants, so the place acquired a historical character decorated with Mamluk antiquities. The first thing that catches the eye in Khan al-Khalili is the mashrabiyas overlooking the street or neighborhood, the water basins and the alleys. The narrow area, amid the crowds filled with colors, precious stones, gold, and silver, and the cafes that carry the stories of everyone who visited them, and the products that exude the scent of ancient Egypt, is an atmosphere that you will not find in any area other than the Khan, and that is what distinguishes it. The pyramids of Egypt are royal tombs built over a period of 2,700 years, starting from the Old Kingdom until the late Ptolemaic period. The construction of the pyramids began in the era of the Third Dynasty and ended in the era of the Sixth Dynasty. This occurred in the period, 2686 to 2325 BC, and the pyramids at that time were not isolated structures, but rather were part of an architectural complex. The ancient Egyptians believed that kings were chosen by the gods to be mediators between them and the people on earth, so it was in their interest to keep the king's body intact until after his death, as it was believed in ancient times that part of the king's soul, known as Ka, remained with his body. In order for his soul to be properly cared for, they mummified the bodies of the kings and buried everything they needed with them in the afterlife, such as golden vessels, food, furniture, etc., in addition to building pyramids as tombs for these kings. Limestone was used in building the foundation of the pyramids, and the best quality of it was used in building the outer layers of those pyramids. Other materials were also used, such as pink granite, which was used in building the interior walls, and basalt, which was used in building the floors. Granite and basalt were also used in building the summit. The pyramid, which was sometimes plated with gold. The workers used different tools, to be able to break blocks, such as shovels, granite hammers, and copper chisels. After crushing them, they are transported to construction sites through boats on the Nile, or using a greased support. This was confirmed by one of the sculptures found in an ancient cemetery. It showed an embodiment of a group of men, 173 men, pulling stones using a greased support, and they were raised to the top using ladders made of bricks and covered with wax. Khafre's Pyramid The Pyramid of Khafre is considered the second largest pyramid of the three pyramids of Giza after the Pyramid of Khufu, where the pharaoh Khafre was buried. The Pyramid of Khafre is famous for the presence of the Sphinx as an external part of it. The pyramid is located 160 meters southwest of the Great Pyramid, with a base area of 210.5 meters, and a height of up to 135.5 meters. It is noteworthy that the pyramid appears at first glance to be larger than the pyramid of his father, King Khufu, due to the height of the ground on which it was built. The top of the pyramid still maintains its external limestone structure, and the distinctive design of the funerary temple can be clearly distinguished from the eastern side of the pyramid. The Step Pyramid of King Djoser The Pyramid of Djoser is the oldest pyramid found in ancient Egypt. 
It was built to bury Pharaoh Djoser in the 27th century BC. It is located northwest of the Egyptian city of Memphis. The height of the pyramid reaches approximately 613 meters and was built like other pyramids of limestone. Pyramid of Khufu. Known as the Great Pyramid of Giza, it is considered the largest of the three main pyramids in Giza, and it is the only pyramid that was classified as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It represents a tomb for the pharaoh Khufu. Historians state that building the pyramid required 100,000 men to work over three months of each year. Its construction took between 10 and 20 years, and the pyramid is surrounded by many main edifices, including three pyramids belonging to King Khufu's wives, two funerary temples, in addition to a small pyramid, as well as small mastaba tombs. The Pyramid of Khufu is considered the most famous monument around the world. This huge structure, with its internal facilities and dimensions, is considered an amazing building. The area of the pyramid, excluding the internal rooms and the rocky base, is 2.3 million cubic meters, its base measures 227.5 meters, and its vertical height reaches 137.2 meters. Menkor's Pyramid It is the third main pyramid of Giza, and was built to be a tomb for Pharaoh Menkor. It is also considered the smallest of the three pyramids of Giza in terms of size. However, it is considered a huge structure with a vertical height of 62 meters, and a base measurement of 108 meters. The pyramid was built of large limestone, and it is noteworthy that on the southern side of the pyramid there are three small and incomplete pyramids, which form graves for the relatives of Pharaoh Menkor. Pyramid of Jedefra The Pyramid of Jedefra is located in the Abu Ra'ash area, making it the closest pyramid to northern Egypt. It was built by King Jedefra, the son and successor of Khufu. The Pyramid of Jedefra was also considered one of the largest pyramids in ancient Egypt, and only ruins remain of it until now. While archaeologists believed in the past that the pyramid was not completed, current archaeologists confirm that it was complete and its size is equal to the size of the Pyramid of Menkor, which is the third largest pyramid in Giza. It is also believed that the Pyramid of Jedefra was considered the most beautiful of the Egyptian pyramids, due to its external facade built of polished granite and limestone. Some also suggest that its beauty was the reason for the Roman Empire dismantling it, during the rule of Augustus Caesar, with the aim of carrying out building projects of their own. This was after the conquest of Egypt, and it is worth noting that the ancient name of the pyramid was the Starry Sky of Jedefra. The pyramids are a very large source of tourist attraction in the Republic of Egypt. Karnak Temple is a wonderful complex of beautiful and unparalleled temples. Karnak includes the temples of the god Ammonius, his wife, the goddess Mut, and her son, the god Khonsu. The construction of the temple began during the Middle Kingdom, around 2000 BC. During the era of the New Kingdom, to which King Tutankhamun and King Ramesses II belonged, a luxurious temple befitting the greatness of the huge Egyptian empire was built on the ruins of this temple. Each king added something new to the temple, out of closeness to the gods, a desire for immortality, and to obtain great fame among the people. 1. The Great Temple of Ammonius R.A. The temple consists of a mirab located on the far eastern side. This niche was prepared to store statues of the god Ammonius and his family. This place is known as the Holy of Holies, which was surrounded by darkness. It is then followed by an open courtyard bathed in daylight, and then this courtyard ends with a great edifice, the entrance located between its two towers. The group of buildings in this temple was numerous, and it took a final shape resembling the letter T, but it is placed diagonally on one of its sides. This letter is defined by ten edifices, and it also contains a number of courtyards. In front of the temple there is a large square, and in it we see a raised platform in the middle, which was once a berth for the temple's ships, as the Nile used to flow near it in the past. King Seti I erected two obelisks on it, one of which still remains in its place, and from it extends to the facade of the edifice two rows of statues erected by Ramesses two in the form of a sphinx, each with the head of a ram and the body of a lion. It is noted that under the chin of each of them is a statue of the king himself. This road is what they call the Road of Rams. 2. The Temple of Ammonius. It is a spacious courtyard with a row of columns in the shape of papyrus plants on both sides. In the past, in the middle was the Taharka Gosk, which consisted of ten graceful columns erected by King Taharka of the 25th dynasty, and one of the columns is still standing in its place. There are also three compartments in the northwestern corner of this courtyard, prepared to house the sacred ships of the Theban Triad, built by King Seti I of the 19th dynasty. The walls of these compartments were decorated with reliefs representing the sacred ships. 3. Temple of Ramesses III with Karnak. It was built by Ramesses III to house the sacred ships, and this temple is considered a model of a complete Egyptian temple. 
It begins with a great edifice decorated on the outside by two magnificent statues of the king. From the inside, it is followed by the open courtyard, which is bordered by gates, plural weeping, to the east and west. The king appears on the columns in the form of Osiris. The walls are decorated with inscriptions that represent the king in different positions before the god Ammonius. Then there is a vestibule with two rows of columns. The first of these consists of columns to which are attached Osirian statues in the style of courtyard statues, and the second row consists of four columns in the form of a plant. Papyrus. This vestibule leads us to the hypostyle hall, which in turn leads to the three chambers for housing the sacred ships of the Theban triad. Next to it there are several dark rooms that were used for worship purposes. There were two great statues decorating the facade of this edifice of King Ramesses II standing. Only the right statue remains, and next to that edifice is the Hall of Columns, in which the image of the sophistication and grandeur that the art of architecture has reached in our Egyptian country is evident. It is like a forest of columns representing the papyrus plant, and it covers an area of land amounting to 6,000 square meters. It contains 134 columns, each of which is 3.37 meters in diameter, and the height of the side columns is 13 meters, while the height of the central columns is about 21 meters, and the columns are all in the shape of papyrus stems. The high columns are topped with capitals shaped like blooming papyrus flowers. It was said about the size of the crown that it can accommodate more than 10 people standing on top of it. As for the short columns, their capitals also resemble the closed buds of papyrus flowers. This hall was roofed with huge blocks of stones. Some of them are still in place. As for the inscriptions on these columns, and on the walls behind them, they are extremely magnificent and beautiful. Some of its colors are still bright, and it represents King Seti and his son, Ramesses II, offering sacrifices to the various gods. As for the scenes engraved on the walls of this lobby from the outside and they can be reached by exiting from one of the side doors, they are pictures representing both King Seti and his son Ramesses II in their various wars with Egypt's enemies, the Hittites and the Libyans. 4. Temple of Khonsu The Temple of Khonsu is an ancient Egyptian temple. It is located inside the great court of Ammonius R.A. at Karnak, Luxor. It is an example of a temple in the New Kingdom of Egypt. It was built by Ramesses III, the second king of the 20th dynasty, in the year 1198 BC. The sun perpendiculars to the Karnak temple once a year, specifically on December 21st, that is, at the beginning of the winter season. The sun perpendiculars to the Holy of Holies of the Karnak temple is the second most important event after its perpendiculars to the temple of Abu Simbel. This event reveals the ability of the pharaohs to calculate astronomical geometric calculations of the Earth's movement around the sun, and then build the temple according to these calculations. It is worth noting that the sun is perpendicular to Deir el-Bahari and Karen Palace at the same time, December 21st, an astronomical phenomenon that occurs once a year. The Great Temple of Abu Simbel, located in Nubia near the southern border of Egypt, is among the most magnificent monuments in Egypt. King Ramesses II of the 19th dynasty was completely cut into the mountain, around 1264 BC. The temple is famous for its four huge seated statues that adorn its facade, one of which collapsed due to an ancient earthquake, and its remains are still on the ground. Huge statues of the king stand on either side of the main hall leading to the Holy of Holies, where four gods sit, Ammonius Are, Are Horakdi, Ta, and the deified Ramesses II. The temple was built with great precision so that the sun's rays enter the temple two days a year, on February 22nd and October 22nd, and cross the main hall, illuminating the statues located in the depths of the temple. It is believed that these dates correspond to the coronation and birth of Ramesses II. The Abu Simbel Temple was carved into the belly of the mountain, with an area of 320 kilometers south of Aswan. To the north lies another rock-cut temple known as the Small Temple, dedicated to the goddess Hathor and the great royal wife of Ramesses II, Queen Nefertari. On the facade of the Small Temple stand huge statues of her, the same size as those of her husband, in a very rare example. In 1960, the complex of facilities was completely moved to another place, on an artificial hill made of a dome structure, and above the reservoir of the high dam in Aswan. It was necessary to move the temples to avoid them being drowned during the construction of Lake Nasser, and the formation of a huge artificial water reservoir after the construction of the high dam in Aswan on the Nile River. An international donation campaign was launched to save the temple, and the rescue operation began in 1964. This operation cost $40 million. Between 1964 and 1968, the entire site was cut into large blocks, up to 30 tons and on average 20 tons, and they were dismantled and reassembled at the site. New, at an altitude of 65 m and 200 m above the river level, 
the issue of transportation is considered one of the greatest works in archaeological engineering, and some structures were saved from under the waters of Lake Nasser. The transportation process was completed and the temple was accepted into the list of World Heritage Sites UNESCO in 1979. The Egyptian Museum is one of the largest and most famous international museums, located in the heart of the Egyptian capital, Cairo, on the northern side of Tahrir Square. Its establishment dates back to 1835. The Egyptian Museum is considered one of the first museums in the world that was established as a public museum. The museum includes more than 180,000 artifacts, the most important of which are the archaeological collections found in the tombs of the kings and the royal entourage of the Middle Dynasty in Dasher in 1894. The museum now includes the greatest archaeological collection in the world that expresses all stages of ancient Egyptian history. The story of the museum began when foreign consuls accredited to Egypt expressed their admiration for ancient Egyptian art and worked to collect Egyptian antiquities and send them to major European cities. Thus, the Egyptian antiquities trade began to flourish, which then became a European fashion. During the 19th century, gifts of these rare pieces were widespread among the aristocracy, and coffins were among the most important and most sought-after pieces. There was more than one museum before the Cairo Museum, such as the Egyptian Museum in Azbekia, the Egyptian Museum in the Citadel, the Egyptian Museum in Bulak, Antakana, the Egyptian Museum in Giza and finally the current Egyptian Museum. The site for establishing the museum was chosen near the Pyramids of Giza, to be built on an area of 117 acres, the museum includes eras prehistoric, this group includes various types of pottery, decorative tools, hunting tools, and daily life requirements, which represent the product of the Egyptian before the knowledge of writing, which settled in many places in Egypt in the north, center, and south of the country. Founding era, it includes antiquities from the first and second dynasties, such as the Narmer plate, the statue of Kaskemwi, and many utensils and tools. Old Kingdom era, it includes a group of artifacts, the most important of which are statues of Djoser, Khafer, Menkor, Sheikh al-Balad, the dwarf Seneb, Pai I and his son Marian Are, many coffins, statues of individuals, wall pictures, and the collection of Queen Hedefers. The era of the Middle Kingdom, this group includes many artifacts, the most important of which is the statue of King Mentaheb II, a group of statues of some of the kings of the 12th dynasty, such as Sinusrat I, Amenemhat III, and others, and many statues of individuals, coffins, ornaments, and daily life tools, and the pyramids of some of the Fayum pyramids. The era of the New Kingdom, it is the most famous collection in the museum, headed by the collection of the young pharaoh Tutankhamun, the statues of Hatshepsut, Tuthmosis III, and Ramesses II, in addition to chariot wheels, papyri, ornaments, the Akhenaten collection, the Israel painting, the statues of Amenhotep III and his wife T, the collection of amulets, writing and agricultural tools, and then the collection of royal mummies that are displayed. In its own hall, which opened in 1994, until the royal mummies were transferred to the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization in Fustat as part of the Royal Mummies Parade event in 2021. Late periods, the collection includes various artifacts, including the treasures of Tanis made of gold, silver, and precious stones, which were found in the tombs of some kings and queens of the 21st and 22nd dynasties in San Al-Hajar, in addition to some important statues such as the statue of Ammonius, Mentumhet, a statue of the goddess Taurat, and the Canopus decision Stila, Abu Kur, the Anki Stila, and a group of Nubian antiquities, some of which were transferred to the Nubian Museum in Aswan. The Nile River is the source of Egypt's economic wealth. It is the main artery of communication, trade, and transportation in Egypt. It is also the source of its fertility and wealth, and this is what makes it a suitable land for agriculture. It is the longest river on earth and is located on the continent of Africa and flows to the north. It has two main tributaries, the White Nile and the Blue Nile. The White Nile originates in the Great Lakes region. In Central Africa, the Nile Basin covers an area of 3.4 million square kilometers, and its path passes through 11 African countries called the Nile Basin countries, which is Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Kenya, Ethiopia, Eritrea, South Sudan, Sudan, Egypt. There are many, many long and short Nile cruises on ships or boats. These boats travel on the Nile, where you can see stunning views. They also pass through Aswan and Luxor, which has the beauty and presentation of Egyptian food. The most famous and delicious Egyptian food is fish of all kinds, malakia, koshari and many famous dishes in Egypt. Alexandria is the second capital of Egypt and was its ancient capital and largest city. It is located on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, 
about 55 kilometers northwest of the Nile Delta, on an area of 2,523 square kilometers, bordered to the north by the Mediterranean Sea. Alexandria was established by Alexander the Great in 332 BC. One of the most important monuments of Alexandria is the Greco-Roman Museum. 1891, in order to preserve the antiquities of the city of Alexandria, and work on the museum was completed in an integrated manner in 1895, when it was opened by Khedive Abbas Helmi II. The number of its halls was 11 halls. As a result of the archaeological activity and increasing discoveries, the number of its halls increased until it reached 25 halls. It includes some antiquities dating back to the Greco-Roman era and some pharaonic antiquities. The museum has uncovered two important tombs, one from the Ptolemaic era that was found in the Wardian Market area, and the other dating back to the Roman era. They were cut down and transferred to the museum's tribal garden. The museum contains several halls, each hall containing a group of antiquities. In different eras, and it includes many, many antiquities, jewelry and gold, there are also two aquarium museums next to Cape Bay Citadel, one of the most important tourist attractions in Alexandria, which receives large numbers of tourists coming to Alexandria Governorate. It is the only museum that contains live aquatic organisms in the Governorate, it is a small museum that includes several types of fish and animals from the Mediterranean and Red Seas. It also includes other species that live in fresh water, such as the Nile and the Amazon River, which makes it an entertaining, educational, and scientific exhibition at the same time. 2. The museum was established in 1930. It is located near Cape Bay Citadel in Anfushi, and next to the Aquatic Research Institute and the National Institute of Marine Sciences in Cape Bay Citadel Square. 3. It includes several laboratories, a library, aquariums, and salt and fresh sea plants. It is considered part of the Institute of Marine Sciences because it contains a rare collection of fish and aquatic life. It studies all the aquatic life in the Egyptian lakes, including fish, plants, sponges, and seashells. It leads to the preservation of fish wealth. 4. There is a small museum attached to it, which includes models of mummified marine creatures that live in the Red and White Seas and the Amazon River. It also includes the skeleton of a large whale, in addition to a model of a mermaid known in ancient mythology. 5. The museum receives thousands of tourists annually from different parts of the world. It also receives hundreds of children weekly to learn about different types of marine creatures and is considered one of Alexandria's most important tourist attractions. Minus 3 Montaza Palace and Gardens, which is Montaza Palace, is a complex of royal palaces in Egypt located on an area of 370 acres in the second neighborhood of Montaza, east of the city of Alexandria in Egypt. It includes two palaces, the Salamlek Palace, which was built by Khedive Abbas Hilmi II in 1892 as a resting place for him, and the Haramlik Palace, which was built by King Fawad. The first was built in 1925 to be the summer residence of the royal family, and it also includes several other tourist facilities and hotels. 4. Antoniata Gardens Antoniata Palace is a palace that was built during the reign of Muhammad Ali Pasha, and in 1860 Khedive Ismail entrusted the French artist Paul Richard with creating the gardens as a miniature model. From the gardens of the Palace of Versailles in Paris, in which Khedive Ismail stayed during his visit to France. The area of the gardens at that time was about 50 acres. Rather, the area of the gardens reached, as a result of the expansions ordered by Khedive Ismail, to the current location of the Smoha Club. At that time, a large number of rare trees and plants were added to the garden, where it was known. Regarding Khedive Ismail's passion for hunting birds there, ownership of the palace and gardens was transferred to a wealthy man, the Greek baron John Antoniada in the year 1860 AD, after whom the gardens were later named. John Antoniata remained in the palace for some time, and when he died in 1895 AD, the gardens and palace passed by inheritance to his son Anthony, who carried out his father's will. By donating the palace and gardens to the municipality of Alexandria in the year 1918 AD. 5. Cape Bay Citadel Cape Bay Citadel is considered one of the important archaeological sites to which many groups come to support it from all countries of the world and it is placed on the most important tourist programs, whether internally or externally. 1. It was built by the Mamluk Sultan El Ashraf Abu al Nasser Cape Bay in the period between 882 to 884 AH 1477 to 1479 AD. 2. It was built on the ruins of the ancient lighthouse of Alexandria on the eastern end of Faras Island, currently Al Anfushi. 3. It was built to fortify the city of Alexandria and protect it from sea invasions. 4. The castle was built of limestone. 5. It was built on an area of about 1750 square meters. 6. An external wall surrounds it, interspersed with defensive towers. 7. The castle courtyard is surrounded by an internal wall, 
which includes a group of rooms that served as barracks for soldiers and stores of weapons and supplies. 8. The entrance to the castle leads to a courtyard with its main northwestern side at the top. 9. The entrance to the castle, which is a large square castle with three floors. 10. Its four corners are occupied by semicircular towers that end at the top with prominent balconies to defend the city. There is also a cistern next to the C.6. The pillar column is an ancient Roman column located in the city of Alexandria in Egypt, and it is considered one of its most famous archaeological monuments. It is about 27 meters long and made of red granite. Held in honor of the Emperor Diocletian in the 3rd century AD, it is the last remaining ruin of the Serapium Temple built by Posthumus. The exact date of construction of this column has not been determined, but it dates back to the Roman era. It was said that this column was dedicated to Christianity after its victory in Alexandria over Mariam in the Battle of Alchemies. The Mastani Column is the fifth tallest monument as a Roman victory column after Trajan's Column, 35.07 m. The ancient Library of Alexandria, known as the Royal Library of Alexandria or the Great Library, is the largest library of its time and was built by Ptolemy I. It is said that it was founded by Alexander the Great about 23 centuries ago. It is also said that it was founded by Ptolemy II in the early 3rd century BC, in the year, 285-247, BC. The library was exposed to many fires and was completely destroyed in the year 48 BC. In 2002, it was rebuilt under the name of the New Library of Alexandria. The Royal Library of Alexandria was the first public government library known in history and remained the largest libraries of its time. The Library of Alexandria was established by the successors of Alexander the Great more than 2,000 years ago to include the largest collection of books in the ancient world. The number at that time reached 700,000 volumes, including the works of Homer and the Library of Aristotle. Ptolemy I ordered its construction in 330 BC, and it was spent lavishly during the reign of Ptolemy II, when he expanded it and added annexes to it. The library contained a huge number of books and manuscripts, amounting to 700,000 volumes. The fame of the ancient library of Alexandria is due to it being the oldest public government library in the ancient world and not because it is the first library in the world. The libraries of the pharaonic temples were known to the ancient Egyptians, but they were reserved for the priests only, and the Ptolemies themselves who founded them new libraries well. Its greatness is also due to the fact that it contains the books and sciences of the pharaonic and Greek civilizations. Through it, scientific mixing and cultural intellectual convergence occurred with the sciences of the East and the sciences of the West. It is a model of ancient cultural globalization that produced the Hellenistic civilization, where pharaonic and Greek intermingled. Its importance is also due to the importance of those in charge of it, as it was obligatory for every scholar who studied in it to leave a copy of his works in it, and because it was also in the stronghold of science, the stronghold of papyrus and writing tools in Egypt where he collected what was in the libraries of Egyptian temples and the knowledge they contained. Library Fire In the year 48 BC, Julius Caesar burned 101 ships that were located on the shore of the Mediterranean Sea in front of the Library of Alexandria after Ptolemy the Younger, Cleopatra's brother, besieged him after he felt that Julius Caesar was supporting Cleopatra against him. The fire of burning the ships spread to the Library of Alexandria, burning it, where some historians believe it was destroyed. While history also states that the library was severely damaged in 391 AD when the Roman Emperor Theodosius I ordered its destruction, some historians put forward another theory that despite the fire of Theodosius I, the library survived until the year 640 AD. In our time, Alexandria celebrates every year the opening of the new Library of Alexandria, which coincides with October 16, 2002. The Library of Alexandria is considered a revival of the ancient Library of Alexandria and an integrated global cultural edifice that presents all colors of culture to Egypt and the Arab world. It is also considered the fourth largest Francophone library in the world. The most important information about the library. The new Library of Alexandria was established in the Shatbai area to revive the old Library of Alexandria, which was the largest library in the world at that time. The library contains a large collection of books estimated at approximately 2,153,000 books in various languages of the world. Membership in the Public Library of Books has reached more than 118,000 members, and the library services extend to students from 15 other governorates through embassies of knowledge. The library has seven specialized libraries, which are the Library for the Blind, the Audiovisual Materials Library, the Children's Library, the Youth Library, the Rare Books and Special Collections Library, and the Maps Library. The library has three main museums, the Antiquities Museum, the Manuscript Museum, and the Sadat Museum. 
The library is affiliated with the Planetarium Center, in a distinctive circular shape due to the library's geometric construction. It aims to spread scientific culture and holds exhibitions and workshops. It also contains a museum for the history of natural sciences. The library has nine permanent exhibitions, which are the Alexandria Gallery Through the Ages, The World of Shadi Abdel Salam, Masterpieces of Arabic Calligraphy, History of Printing, The Artist's Book, Astronomical and Scientific Instruments of the Arabs in the Middle Ages, Mohidin Hussein Exhibition, A Creative Journey, Exhibition of Works by Artist Abdel Salam Eid, Tiger Care Group and Abdel Ghani Abu Al Anain. The library has a conference center, which was built in a distinctive architectural style according to the latest modern architectural styles. The library contains seven specialized research centers, which are the Manuscript Center, the Center for Documentation of Cultural and Natural Heritage, the Center for Calligraphy and Writing, Information Sciences, Alexandria and Mediterranean Studies, the Arts Center, Scientific Research, and the Dialogue Forum. Sharm el-Sheikh is an Egyptian tourist city, located at the confluence of the Gulfs of Aqaba and Suez on the Red Sea coast. Its area is 480 square kilometers, its population reaches 35,000 people, and it is the largest city in South Sinai Governorate. The city includes tourist resorts frequented by visitors from all over the world, and is famous for being one of the international diving centers that attracts amateurs and professionals of this sport. It also includes an international airport, and in front of its coast are the islands of Tehran and Sanafar, and among its most important areas are Ras Nazrani, Ras Am Sid, Ras Jamila, Ras Kina, Sharm El Maya, Naklat Al Tabal, in addition to the Ras Muhammad Reserve located to the south of it, the Nabk Reserve between it and Dahab, and Nama Bay at the meeting place of the continents of Asia and Africa, and it contains more than 200 hotels and resorts, in addition to restaurants, cafes, commercial markets, entertainment cities, nightclubs, and casinos. Hergada is the administrative capital of the Red Sea Governorate, and occupies an area of 40 kilometers of the coastal strip on the western shore of the Red Sea. It is bordered to the north by the city of Ras Garib, to the south by the city of Safaga, to the east by the Red Sea coast, and to the west by the Red Sea mountains. The city of Hergada is famous for its beautiful turquoise beaches with white sand, in addition to the places to go out that the city abounds in. It is a comprehensive entertainment program to spend your happiest times through the tourist attractions. The ancient buildings at the port, the restaurants of the tourist promenade, and also the islands belonging to Hergada. Based on the above, let us now learn about the best places to go out in Hergada, in addition to the most important activities that visitors are keen to do in the city. Crazy Land Amusement Park, Fish Ring, Makati Promenade, Sand Museum, Yacht Marina and many others. Egypt contains many, many, beaches, such as Marsa Alam, Ein Sakna, and others.